Now, it's my pleasure to turn the stage over to several terrific speakers and tireless advocates for peace. First, a former Marine Corps sergeant who saw com combat in Vietnam and returned home to become a peace activist. He has been a leader in the San Francisco chapter for Veterans for Peace, Paul Cox. Thank you very much. Um, it's a real honor to be on this stage today with uh, um, some of my heroes of, of the Vietnam War, David Harris, Norman Solomon, uh, Daniel Ellsberg, um, my claim to fame is I was dumb enough to join the Marine Corps and go off to Vietnam. Oh, I'm sorry, and I forgot, of course, Congresswoman Wilsey, one of my real heroes in Congress. Oops. And <laughs> uh, yeah, well, let's not screw it up too bad, OK? Um, <clears throat> and I want to ask the same question that, that Congresswoman Wilsey asked. Why, why are we here? We're here because we're at, we've been at war for a long time. And not to contradict her, but I would put to you that we've been at war for 22 years, since 1990. Iraqi people have been dying since, our first, since the first Persian Gulf War. And, and this, is, this is permanent war. I also happen to belong to the American Legion, you know, and to be in a member of the American Legion, you have to have been in the service during a period of time that's considered war. Well, since 1990, they've kind of suspended that. So anybody that's been in the service since 1990 is eligible to be in the American Legion. Somebody in the, in the, in the military in 1955, for example, cannot join the American Legion. It's just a minor point, but even the American Legion recognizes that we're in a state of permanent war. The, um, and when 1990 rolled around, I, I got to tell you, a lot of Vietnam veterans, myself included, were really disturbed we really kind of thought we were going to be the last of the veterans. We thought we were going to be the last veterans alive in this country, and that really pleased us. And when we realized that it's just going to go on and on and on, uh, it, it put a lot of guys into the hospital. It put a lot of guys into a real stressful situation. And it's been uh, tough getting used to that idea ever since. Even then, we didn't realize we were going to be at war 22 years later. And since 19, uh, since 2003, when we or 2001 when we invaded Afghanistan, uh, a really stupid place to invade, by the way. Um, you know, we've been in a really, we've, you know, it's, it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. And, and it's, a, it's a very depressing and, and uh, a serious situation that makes, makes us really angry. Here we are, one of the richest countries in the world, fighting wars against some of the poorest countries in the world. During the Vietnam War, Vietnam was one of the poorest countries in the world, and we slaughtered them in great numbers. And now we're fighting in Afghanistan, one of the poorest countries in the world. We're fighting in Iraq, before 1990, actually a fairly middle-class country, but now one of the poorest countries in the world. We have turned our industrial might on these countries, one after the other. While we deindustrialize the rest of our country, we, we keep the only real industries we have in this country anymore, the only real industries, are automobile making and weapons making. And this is driving our economy, this can't go on, this is driving our economy into a hole. And if for no other reason, if there's no moral issues at fault here, if for no other reason, we are going to ruin ourselves. You know, uh, as I think it was Frances Fitzgerald that pointed out that um, that uh, she wanted to make sure that General Westmoreland understood that the the uh, the definition of the word to attrit is reflexive, and wars of attrition are going to come back and bite us, and they already are, and we've cre we've created a generation of warriors in this country that are not, um, you know, that's going to that's going to be hard for these young men and women to ever adjust to um, what they've had to see and what they've had to do. Again, I thank you very much for your time. I thank you very much for your heart. I thank you very much for your hard work. Thank you, Paul Cox.